This year, a German company wants to unveil the best humanoid robot in the world, and they have raised 120 million euros funding alone in January. Humanoid robots can walk, dance, run, parkour, and even do kung fu. And it's pretty impressive what is possible. In the meantime, a real battle has broken out for this new market. At the forefront, China and the USA. Now Germany could follow with a new robot, which is set to cost just 16,000 euros at launch. But how competitive is Germany really when it comes to humanoid robots? What are the greatest advances? And what steps do politicians need to take to ensure that robots bring us a good future? That's what it's all about now. And with that, welcome to the German Science Guy. I'm Dr. Jakob Potton. And in Germany, we say Los geht's. Today, there are around 160 companies worldwide working on humanoid robots. Humanoid robots, as we know them today, have developed in three phases. The beginning was, where else, in Japan. From the late 1960s, projects with walking robots were developed at the Waseda University in Tokyo. They didn't yet look like an Optimus from Tesla, but they were the first step towards the robots of today. The aim was to be able to walk to some extent. And even that took quite a while. Phase two only began at the turn of the millennium with humanoid robots such as Asimo. It was already able to walk much better, at least most of the time. The robots from phase two were the first to have an intelligent control system on board and with simple sensors, they were now able to perceive basic information from their environment. Overall, these robots had a rather low level of intelligence. However, this changed from 2010 onwards. Level 3 brought truly groundbreaking advances in robotics. The movements became highly dynamic and thanks to greatly improved control systems, humanoid robots now have significantly better perception and can even perform complicated movements safely. Robots like Atlas are now considered highly intelligent. They already have human-like abilities, better perception than their predecessors, judgment and can make decisions. A German startup now wants to put these robots in the shade and they have announced the world best humanoid robot for June. But first, humanoid. What does this actually mean? A robot itself is first and foremost a programmable machine. It can perform tasks automatically under certain conditions and interact with its environment. A humanoid robot is now a special form of a robot that mimics the appearance of humans. Its behavior should also be as human-like as possible. Overall, humanoid robots are strongly inspired by human intelligence and adaptability. This gives them clear advantages over other forms of robots, especially when interacting with real people. Unlike normal robots, we could use humanoid robots in an enormous number of areas that are actually made for humans. In industry for labor-intensive tasks, in rescue missions for example in the event of a nuclear accident, or in mines. But humanoid robots could also make a real difference as support in the medical field or in everyday life, for example as care or learning assistance. And one thing must also be mentioned here. Humanoid robots could of course also be used for military purposes. In recent years, the capabilities of robots have continued to increase. This mainly is due to artificial intelligence. The benefits of AI for robots can already be seen, for example, in the self-driving cars from robotaxi company Waymo. They are already making 100,000 journeys a week in the USA, completely autonomously, without a driver, and they are even doing better in the accident statistics than humans themselves. And of course, this development is also desired for humanoid robots. Research is currently working particularly hard on two areas for improvement. The imitation of human appearance and functional similarity. The head and face in particular are becoming increasingly important for humanoid robots. We use the face and our facial expressions to convey emotions and build trust. And there are very different approaches to doing this. Robots with strong human characteristics often have lifelike artificial skin and hair and can express emotions with their face. The company Engineered Arts has made some of the greatest progress in recent years with its robots Ameka and AZ. But there are also promising approaches with robots without complex facial features, but with a virtual face. In France, for example, the service robot Mirokai from Enchanted Tools was unveiled in 2022. The robot is the size of an eight-year-old child and its head is more reminiscent of an enemy character than a real person. And although Mirokai doesn't look like a typical humanoid robot, it can also express emotions. At the other end of the spectrum are robots like Tesla's Optimus. Although it has a head, it cannot express facial expressions or emotions. 
Tesla has a slightly different focus and this is in the areas with less human interaction. The second generation of Optimus works already quite well in factory environments. BMW has actually already successfully tested humanoid robots in a factory in Spartanburg in the USA, specifically those of the figure 02 model. However, particularly great progress is being made in China. The first robot half marathon recently took place there. Unitree, for example, launched the H1 robot in 2023. It can not only walk and climb stairs, it can also react to external disturbances and at the beginning of 2024 it was even the fastest robot on two legs at 11.9 km per hour. But only until another Chinese company broke the record in October. Star One from Robot Era simply went constantly for 34 minutes at 12.98 km per hour on grass, gravel and roads. What's really funny is that the company's researchers have discovered that it can even run faster in sport shoes than barefoot or steel foot if you want so. Never mind. And also another funny side fact, there's also a Chinese Kung Fu robot. It only has three fingers at the moment, but it can use them to exert force in a controlled and precise manner. Others are a bit more advanced when it comes to hands and figures. Optimus, for example, has a pretty good sense of touch, which means he can simply grip much more precisely. So the progress here is really great and what has also changed a lot is the cost of such robots. They are now even relatively cheap. The Unity G1 is available for as little as 16,000 US dollars. Tesla wants to offer Optimus for 20,000 US dollars. And the new robot from Germany is actually competitive. And Germany could possibly even become the market leader here. At the beginning of the year, the robotics startup Neura Robotics from Baden-Württemberg raised 120 million euros in a round of investors and in June the company wants to present the best humanoid robot in the world. Just one small information for you, I already did a video about them on my German channel and then Neura Robotics invited me to the company, so soon there will be a video where I give you a view inside the factory, so make sure to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any more videos. And also you support this very young channel. So what is the company talking about? Specifically it is talking about the third generation of its 4NE1 robot, which means for anyone, and the service robot is designed to help in private households and in industry and at 16,000 euros it's priced to compete even with those from China. In the future the price could even fall to 5,000 euros per robot. That is of course quite a challenge. The startup was founded in 2019 and has actually built almost all of its robots in China for a very long time. There have even been 9 figure takeover bids from China. But production has been back in Germany since 2024. There was also a reason for this. Nobody in Germany wanted to invest in the startup at the beginning. Back then the first investments came from China which is why the first factory was there. However there are now major investments here too at least in Nora Robotics. The company wants to position itself as a strategic counterweight to the robotics companies in the USA and China. However, the USA is not as big as a competitor as you might think. Of all the robots used worldwide, more come from Europe than from North and South America combined. Europe has a market share of around 15%. This is significantly less than Asia's share, which is three quarters, but it shows how strong Europe is in robotics. And various estimates assume that this robotics market will grow massively in the future. Humanoid robots could have a global market volume of 38 billion euros by 2035. So that sounds very good for us at first. However, we and Neuro Robotics have a few problems to solve and that brings me to my big catch or big hurdle or big butt of today. Before that, why don't you quickly subscribe and activate the bell so that you don't miss any more videos and also you support this very young channel. We put a lot of work in the videos and we are super transparent about our sources, which is also a lot of work you can always find the sources down here. So I would be very happy if you support our work with your subscription. Okay. Let's talk about the problems, the big but as I call it. There are some big problems with humanoid robot. It starts with emotional interaction. Natural emotional expressions require an enormous amount of access of movement, especially with micro movements of the eyes, eyebrows and lips. The mechanics and expression control need to become much finer. This is probably one of the reasons why most of the current models usually have a display or no face at all. That way you can get around it a bit. But the emotion recognition itself doesn't work that well either. But this is very important when a robot interacts with people. 
This brings us to the topic of safety. Because humanoid robots are increasingly being integrated into human environments, they need to be better protected against cyber attacks and malfunctions, but also the cooperation with humans needs to improve. You can see what this means at the US logistics service provider GXO. Many humanoid robots of the digit type are already working there. At the moment, however, they still work separately from humans as they can quickly run over their human colleagues with their 65 kilograms. The Norwegian humanoid robot NeoGamma and also the robot Figure 02, they are therefore be tested in private households for the first time in 2025. However, this will take place under constant monitoring by the company so that they can intervene in an emergency. In order for this to no longer be necessary in the future, humanoid robots would need better embodied intelligence. This means that robots must learn to perceive their environment even more accurately, including all objects, obstacles, human emotions and human intentions. And there's another problem we have to talk about. And I probably assume that you already have this question in mind. It's an ethical question. What will we actually do when the robots take over our jobs? And that's not even that unrealistic anymore. McKinsey estimates in less than 20 years, 40% of all physical work could be automated by robots. Automation has already made many jobs redundant. In Germany today, there are 429 robots for every 10,000 people in industry. This puts us in fourth place worldwide. The International Monetary Fund estimates that this development could be further accelerated by generative artificial intelligence and that more and more automation will further reduce the share of labor incoming in national income. According to the IMF, this could accelerate social inequality. Of course, this is also a risk for tax revenues themselves. We therefore need a system that can absorb this in the long term. There are also a number of ideas, from taxing robots to financing through a tax on capital gains. Although I have to be honest and say that this is really unlikely to work very well as all of this can be easily avoided. My personal opinion is that we need to consider how society could have a greater share of the profits from robots. Nora Robotics even specifically argues that the labor output of humanoid robots should help finance social systems in the future. So if done well, I think this could be a real opportunity for the welfare state. In other words, the state invests in the technologies, aka we as a society finance them, and in the end, society benefits from them. But how do you see this, and how do you think the field will develop? I'm curious to hear what you think, so be sure to write it in the comments. I have to say, in the last videos, the comments were really great. Thank you so much for that. And if you want so, here's another video about a topic I really like. It's about Majorana, it's a quantum computing field. And actually, there have been pretty big headlines and also YouTube videos about this topic, but actually not all of this was true. And we talked to experts from Germany and also England and the Netherlands, and they have some critique on the videos and on the news. So check this video out, it's really interesting. And I say goodbye or Auf Wiedersehen, as we say it in Germany. See you next time.